Good afternoon. I hope you all are wonderful and ready for this very creative session today. I hope the week so far was absolutely fantastic and that you are keeping warm. Um, South Africa has, um, I believe, very cold days in the Cape. So I hope those, those fireplaces are burning and that you have enough red wine in your um, pantries. Today I'll be sharing creative ways of how to upcycle something that really needs some love and attention. In front of me I have a table that we've actually purchased a few for the factory to upcycle and this is what it currently looks like. I'm not even sure. I think this is super wood that just has worked extremely hard and now we are going to give it a new coat and a new meaning and a, a new a new inspiration for you on users with chocolate paint so my surface I have wiped down well with lacquer thinners purely because I don't know what was on here you can see there are marks and yeah I don't know what it was used for but I had to clean it to make sure that it is grease free, that it is oil free and anything that can prevent the paint from gripping that I have removed that. I used lacquer thinners for the cleaning part, dampened a cloth well and wiped it down well, allowed 40 minutes to dry and cure. Now for those of you that really live in cold, wet areas in the country, or in any place in the world, remember that temperatures do play a part in the curing time of paint. So always allow more time for paint to cure and even with the um, cleaning process. For a base coat, I am going to use Eye of Elsie. This is one of our new color additions. Um, if you haven't seen our video on YouTube, where we introduce all the team members to you. Go have a look. It's very special and inspiring. So there's Eye of Elsie. I am going to apply my Eye of Elsie on this surface. It's a large, flat surface. So I'm going to use a mohair roller. Mohair usually are used for um, for oil paint and enamel paint applications and it's a lovely tool to use on a large flat surface. I prefer Hamilton's mohair rollers. I have washed the roller first purely because there can be loose pieces of fabric on the roller so you want to remove any loose bits. Then I've dried it properly using a matting cloth so that there's no wetness, no water on the roller. If you leave water on the roller, it will make watermarks when you work with it. I have decanted some Eye of Elsie in my paint tray and now I'm going to roll my roller through this. Make sure I distribute paint onto my roller and a generous amount. You can use a foam roller. Foam rollers are very temperamental. And if you are not familiar with the use of a foam roller on a large flat surface, the moe is, the, is your go-to tool. You will actually love me for this tip. So what I'm going to do, start in the center. I'm not gonna add more paint. You can see how thirsty this table is. No undercoat, no base coat is required, just chocolate paint. And it gives a beautiful even finish the joy of a roller is that you can change direction. With a paintbrush, we always paint with the grain of the wood, but with a roller, 
you can change direction. So I even it out, make sure it's done nicely, evenly. You are in control, so make sure you do it properly and neatly. I'm just going to add more paint. The greatest advice I can give is to enjoy the entire process. You are busy giving this worn piece new life and new meaning. I think my paint is going to be enough. The thing with the roller, it really absorbs a lot of product. And with a mohair, you actually can press harder. That's where foam roller is very temperamental. You can't overwork a foam roller. As with a mohair roller, you have time to make sure it's done properly and neatly. Oh, my edges, Crystal is showing me. I can't see what you're seeing, so I hope this is done neatly. Are you happy, Crystal? Yeah, she knows things are done properly. At Choco, we don't do anything halfway. We give it our best. And then the roller falls off. Make sure to prevent that from happening. There's a bolt at the, at the front that you tighten it well. This was not my fault. It's Crystal's fault. Okay, but the painting process is complete and our table has a base coat. One coat is more than enough. How to get rid of your roller? Listen to Chris. Now I'm going to move over to this table. Now what I've done here is I've already started with a wood graining technique. Um, not only myself, Lee from the potch door assisted me yesterday and I'm going to repeat the process on this half. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to work with the next three colors. Dance wash. Ish mouth ish. And then Alvis mix. So these are the three colors I'm going to work with. You will see to create a root graining technique. Also remember your color scheme might vary from mine and your preferences might vary. So you can use grays. If you are a colorful person and you love color, you can even do this technique with various colors. It all depends on what you like. And also remember things I say aren't rules. These are just guidelines and I'm sure as you try things and work with the paint and try techniques, you will find ways that you like and that work easier. So just see this as, as guidance. I am going to use, this is just a normal fiber brush and these are ensign brushes. Due to the technique, the quality of your paint brush is not important because we are going to remove most of the paint with a wood graining tool. So I'm just opening some brushes. Just create some order in front of me. I make sure I have a brush for each color for the life, but for the life of me, you don't need so many brushes. I think you will also see as I go, I might just dip the same brush in all the colors. So I start with Dawn's wash, dip my paintbrush in the paint. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from that side so that everything makes sense to Crystal. 
Crystal is my graphic, my creative assistant and the lady behind the camera, for those that didn't know. So I'm painting some dance wash. You see, same brush. Ish mouse ish, very randomly. Same brush, Alvis mix. And I paint the size of my paintbrush. So the width of my paintbrush, that's how wide the line is I'm painting on my table. Make sure all the joining spots are closed. Just blend those three colors quickly together. Now I have my wood graining tool. I push it down and I press hard and I move it forwards, backwards, slide it forwards, move it backwards. And if you want to, how stunning is that? Wipe it clean with a cloth so that the paint doesn't clog up all those grooves and crevices on the tool. If you want to change anything, say for instance I felt that this section was too thick, you can't make a mistake. Simply move over that section with your tool again to remove some paint and to have a nice, have some nice detail over there. Okay. Yeah, you rock it. That is, that's a great description. So I'm rocking the, the wood graining tool. Let's do another one. Start with Dawn's wash. Make sure I touch those edges. Then some ish mouse ish. And it's nice if you do everything at the same time so that you can see the colors. Here, I've already washed on top as well. So those colors have dried already. So rather do everything while the paint is still wet so that you can make sure that you gain the same shades and shadows and tones on your surface. Once again, just the width of my paintbrush and that is a, this is a 38 millimeter paintbrush I'm using. Just blend those colors together quickly. Make sure the lines meet, that there are no open spaces between what I've done previously and where I'm going to use the wood graining tool now. Make sure I clean it and I'm pressing hard and I'm Rocking it backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. This is so satisfying. I'm going to do one more. And I'll show you now on the table that Suzuki has prepared for me. He has only used one color, but using the three colors actually creates such a beautiful effect. But it, once again, it depends completely on, um, on you. What you like, color schemes in your space. You can even create a very bleached and beached look effect with neutrals, whites and creams. Just some Alvis mix. Are there any questions? Just ask them. That's why I'm here and I'm always willing to assist. Rocking it, pressing hard, going forwards, backwards. Where can you buy the wood grinder tool? Um, P&A, 
stocks wood graining tools as some as well as stationery stores um, we are also looking into it to be stocking it soon so that we can assist with that as well and you can inquire then from your nearest choco stockist now what i've done on this section this initially looked exactly as this side the only thing i have done differently here is i've lightly sanded the surface with a hundred grit um, piece of sanding paper once it was completely dry and i did a washed finish onto the surface i'm going to show you on this table that suzuki did and here you can see the clear difference between using only one color and over here using more than one color. How the grooves and crevices and the detail is just much more visible. Now on this table, I'm going to wash with exactly the same color and technique as I have done over here. So let me show you the sanding part sometimes the noise is just horrible so it's light pressure and in circular motion i'm not going to do it because it will just sound horrible light pressure circular motion and then it will also accentuate the tones between light and dark next once the sanding part is complete make sure to dust your surface i'm having a piece of mutton cloth you can use an old rag, an old t-shirt, any piece of cloth that's soft to touch and that absorbs moisture well. And I'm going to use the color Dove It. I scoop out two fingers full of Dove It. Make sure I distribute it everywhere. Another two fingers. On my maybe five fingers so I'm making my cloth dirty with Davit it's a beautiful antique white color we are actually busy revamping a kitchen in this color and it's absolutely beautiful now you can see all this loose bits that comes from my mutton cloth so very important is to fold your mutton cloth so those loose bits don't reach your surface while you're busy working and it annoys you. This is a very subtle change. You might not see it on camera. I'm going to do it harder, so more definite, so that the change becomes visible. And I'm going to remove my bangles so that the sound is not a problem. In circular motion and this can also be done with a darker color I have just selected a lighter color and you can hear how dry the surface is but it looks absolutely amazing Can you see the difference on screen? Tiny bit. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm sure the process does make sense. We did show washing technique last week on the wall as well. No, the hacky is not hanging yet. I st still need to jump over the hacky to get it to my house before it can hang. I will promise I'm guilty as charged. I will send you that final pick. Now what I want to do, due to the fact that this is a tabletop, I do want to seal it. Choco has a building sealant. So there's no way that I will be removing the paint. If I do remove paint, it means two, one of two things. Either I didn't clean properly or the paint hasn't cured yet. Okay. Also, something that's very important is don't paint on a recent varnished surface. Varnish takes at least six months to cure. But if the cleaning process was done properly and the paint has cured properly, 
no scratching off will occur. Um, in the cold winter months, just be more patient. If I, for instance, now scratch off a piece, I can and I see, oh, I maybe haven't cleaned that section properly. Simply with a thinnest cloth, just clean there again and repaint. So never ever are you stuck with a problem ever. Now I'm going to mix some glaze. So charcoal has a built-in sealant. Kitchens, bathrooms outside and something like a tabletop are definite surfaces that I will glaze. What the glaze does, it makes the surface more stain resistant so it will just be easier to wipe it clean and it also makes it water and UV resistant for outside use. I think you all were part of my garden pots in lockdown in 2020 that I painted in Danny's day. They are still just as beautiful and I place them there in the sun outside every day. There's a question, Crystal, ask it. That's such a good question. So the instructions, the question was, how long does it take for the paint to cure? The instructions on the lid says, wait at least four hours. As a rule, I wait overnight. In very severe coldness and um, humidity, rather wait 48 hours. I know it's extremely cold in the Cape at the moment. And Marina asked, and I must say about something about Marina later, that I just repeat that today. Be patient, Cape Tonians. Drink your wine and sit in front of the fireplace. Now for the ceiling of this top, I am going to use clear glaze. Some cooled boiling water. The reason for that is tap water contaminates. If you use cooled boiling water, you can put back in your container whatever is left and a micro fiber cloth. Let me just see where's mine. I did dip it. Here it is. A damp micro fiber cloth. So it's your clear glaze, it's cooled boiling water and a micro fiber cloth. They are soft to the touch, it works like a charm and I'm going to show you. Now the glaze application and the level of the the sheenness of the glaze can be manipulated. I like to use, the instructions don't say that, but this is like that secret in, um, recipe grandmother never shared with everyone. I'm open to share. I like to use one part glaze, one part water. Let's do it together. So then you have a very subtle satin finish and apply two coats and it gives a beautiful result. So there's my measuring cup, 80 mils glaze. I'm taking water. This is just water with some glaze left over in my measuring cup and one part water. Now I've waited, just pretend I have waited overnight or even another day if I live in the Cape. I dip my damp microfiber cloth in my glaze mix. I make sure it has absorbed glaze everywhere. You can wear gloves. This is a pure acrylic sealant. It's not toxic, but it will leave like a film on your hands if you don't wash it off immediately after use. I make sure my cloth is still nice and damp and in circular motions I wipe my glaze onto my surface. I make sure I work in a well lit space that I can see I have wiped everywhere. I feel that my cloth is getting dry. I just repeat the entire process. And I will, once this is dry and I see any streakiness that is caused due to the fact that I've missed certain areas, just apply another coat on my entire surface. This makes the surface stain resistant, water resistant, and it gives it a subtle satin finish. Also, once again, 
allow the glaze to cure for 48 hours. It dries quite quick, but before you put anything on the table, just to allow it time to cure and dry. Make sure you do it everywhere. Aileen with a very important question. Yes. Someone called Jakob Foster wants to know, can he paint his golf gloves? Huh? Jakob Foster wants to know, can he paint his golf gloves? Yeah, you can paint your golf gloves any color of the rainbow. Um, they say it doesn't influence your swing or the distance um, of your drive. It actually just adds more excitement to your golf game. And then whatever is left over, you give to your wife. Okay, and this is it. How easy, how beautiful. We will style the table and we'll send you a final shot of what it looks like. I hope that in this week that's ahead, that you can add some color into someone else's life. And there is a person so special who is celebrating her birthday today um if i have left anyone out i'm so sorry if it's your birthday today feel the birthday wishes coming your way marina smith she is our cape town representative and she's also an admin on our choco creations group we all wish you the most amazing and blessed birthday and year ahead i hope you all are inspired and I hope all the men will paint their golf clubs and I hope to see beautiful more creations on our Facebook group. Love you all. Bye.